Hello everyone and welcome to this little tutorial on how to paint a rose with two different co colors like this. And I thought um, this was such a pretty rose. These are, this is my own reference photo and it kind of has a almost Christmassy feel to it because it's red and white like that. So I thought, why not paint that? And I've got, um, I've got out my paint um, up here. You can't see it. There's just some black, white, and I'll just slide it down for a second so you can see all my colors. Yellow ochre, cad yellow light, cad red medium, alizarin crimson, sap green, viridian orange, transparent red oxide and brown oxide. And I've got uh, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue and quinacrinone red. So I always put out a little quinacrinone red because it mixes well with white to make pink. Whereas alizarin with white just makes sort of a, a gray color. And I'm working also using just this um, canvas pad from Michael just to do this little tutorial on. And if you don't have any of this canvas paper, it's very inexpensive. And I suggest that if you're having trouble getting going with your painting and you just don't want the pressure of having to do something with an expensive canvas, it's a great way just to kind of warm up um, your painting and just to get going on something that's um, not too not too stressful, just sort of a prep like a good practice surface. So I'm making up a, a wash for the background using some ultramarine blue and some transparent brown oxide. And I'm just going to put a bit of this down because I need a I just need a contrast for this rose to go on. And I'm those are probably one of my most challenging flowers to paint. Um, but I just figured we'll give it a try. We'll give it a shot because it's such a pretty um, colored rose. So I've got my um, wash down and you'll notice it has, there's a lot of turp in the wash. So depending on your surface, you don't wanna leave too much turp on your surface, whether it's canvas, if you're using something like this uh, gessoed panel like this, this is even slicker. So you'll find that it the turp just like wipes right off. So you want to use less turp on the smoother surfaces like that. And on this rougher canvas, you can get away with a bit more. So I'm going to focus in on that um, rose that I cropped out of the bouquet. And I'm just going to use a Viva towel paper towel with some of the turp. And I'm just going to lift off. Um, I want to lift off where the basic um, shape of that rose is. And just sort of lift off the paint underneath. And kind of paying attention to those the very outer shape of the petals. So the outline shape, when I wipe away, it doesn't obviously have to be perfect, like um, the, the exact rose that you've got there, but you just kind of, it's almost like a good warm up because I'm sort of doodling that shape out. and getting a sense of the space that I'm gonna use. So, and then you can use the real dry part and wipe away like that. So now I've got sort of a good brown to put it on. Another thing I might do even at the beginning stages is get some of that sap green and some um, transparent red oxide there. And I'll sort of put in a few darker strokes of green around it just to get just to get in some darker values. 
So I'm using some sap and to make it a bit darker, I could use alizarin. I'm just going to just put in some darker values around it. And also gives you some good practice doing this um, with, you know, background paint. And I'll show you how we make some green petals out of all that mess too while we're at it. But um, I can go back with my turp and my paper towel and wipe off that green that got on there. You can have fun with it. You can scrape off some of that background. Just all kinds of things you can do to add some texture to your background so it's not just same old, same old. And then I can take my paper towel and it's all what you personal preference. I kind of like that roughed up look. So I'll leave that. And then I'm just gonna switch brushes Got all kinds of brushes here. This one is um, just a Simply Simmons shader brush from Michaels. It says it's a 16, whatever that means. Because I, I think of 16, I think of this as being a 10. I would think of 16 being a lot bigger, but for some reason, in shader brushes, that's what a 16 is, so. All right, so when I'm looking at the rows, I wanna first sort of build, there's almost two sections. There's sort of this warm red section with this greens and kind of, and then it moves into this real cool white with the tips, the dark tips. So I think I'll start with getting that part because it's sort of a, a big area and I'll I'll just use a little alizarin to start and maybe some transparent red oxide just so it's sort of a warm red and I'm going to look at where that edge is and I'm going to just sort of put in just a little bit of a ruffle for that little edge doesn't have to be perfect because I can add all those details later but I just want to kind of get that in it comes up and then it comes down get some more alizarin and I'm looking at that edge kind of curls and comes down and then it gets kind of lighter down there And looking at the direction of the veins on this row, so it kind of comes down and you see all those little kind of light white veins. So you can kind of leave some of the underpaint as it gets close to the bottom there for that lighter area. I'm just gonna really, I'm pulling really gently towards that lighter area there. And then you can even grab some of that green and kind of lift it up. If you wipe off, if you get too dark, just go get your brush. And my brush has some just some turp on it and watch how you can lift off some of that paint again. So if I use a dry brush just with that's cleaned off with the turp, I can relift some of that paint and give it that underglow again, a sort of glowy look. And then I can smooth it off a little here and there. So for now, I'm gonna leave that because I think that looks pretty. And if I wanted to lighten up some of this, I could do the same just using my dry brush and just Put your brush on the edge and kind of pull up and then you get that nice 
glow effect. And then I want to, I can go in and darken some of that edge using that same mixture and just use the edge of my brush a little bit here. But I'm paying attention, you know, to the to the direction. I'm not, I want to have it looking like it's still blending in with this direction of the the way the the petal grows. So it kind of has those lines coming down like that. And then we can move up to I'll get a little bit of that starting to pay attention to the drawing a little. There's sort of a, a line that comes that way and a line that comes up to the top like that. And I'm I'm not, you know, getting it perfect. I'm just trying to get some of these details in. Just really kind of looking at the reference photo. So that comes there and then there's a little piece there. And this one actually kind of wraps around and comes down. And there's another petal that comes up and behind there. And then this one is going to be the kind of a light white edge. It kind of fades down. So we've got the kind of the basic shape of it now. Now I want to sort of look at um, the next area. So we've kind of got this area roughed in, and then there's this light area that has these little kind of, also has the vein marks coming into it. So we don't have to get as detailed with that. What I want to do is mix up a, a white color for that petal that we can drag some of that red down into. So this one's the lightest and it gets kind of almost like a purple kind of color. If I, if I squint down and really look at that section um, right here, this is quite white and then it gets almost like a purple and then it gets more into the reds again and pinks. So I'm gonna mix up something, just a little bit of a warm white for that. I'm just adding a little yellow ochre to white. Might add a tiny bit of viridian to it. So it's got that kind of natural tone. So I've got some viridian and, and I've got a little yellow ochre in this mix. And I can kind of blend up here where there's the white kind of blends in with that red, but I don't want to overly blend yet. Just kind of build that white in there. You can kind of cut in some shapes into that red. See how I'm kind of pushing that paint in. And I'm sort of blending that edge a bit. Get some more of that yellow ochre and a little dab of viridian in there. Just so you're not using the same white as the background. And cut into that, that petal a little to shape it. like that. And now there's some paint there to blend into. And it's 
nice and bright. And I'm gonna now mix up sort of a, a white that has more of that purpley tinge to it that I see in the next level up there. So I'm gonna add some cobalt to that mix and a little bit of this quinacridone red. And that'll kind of create that bluey kind of purple layer that's in the next, well, in the next level up there. And it's quite a bit darker, so I'll add a little bit more pigment to that. So make it a little more, a little more cobalt, a little more quinacridone to that mix. A little bit where I see it kind of comes up into the next level. And there's some of it, some of that lighter value there and in this area here. That other side. Just kind of get that in there and you can kind of put that darker value in there. I'm just putting a little bit of that darker um, shadow color in there. And you can even use a tiny bit of that for the kind of more shadow side of the rows there. So now you've got sort of a base there to work with. Um, you can add in a little more, let's add in a little more alizarin in these darker petals here, just to block in some of those darker reds there. I'm gonna just fill in sort of some of that. Okay, I'm leaving all this all this area here for when I start to blend some of the some of the red in. So now that I've got that base for blending in, I can sort of get trying to figure out which color I want to use. I'll use a little bit of this cad red medium and alizarin together. And I'm just going to pull in some of that red, just to kind of pull it down a little. And same with here, I'll pull a little bit of that into my rows. Very gently, I'm hardly putting any pressure, I'm just sort of dragging the brush down to give it that look. You could even um, see if I have my, yeah, you could get, I've got this cheapy fan brush from Michaels. You could, you could even try gently dragging that red down with that. That actually works very Bob Rossi well. <laughs> so you can try that, but if not, you can, there's all kinds of ways you can make it soft. You can take um, your Viva Town rip it so you get all these soft edges and you can drag it down like that. So now you've kind of got that blendy look. So now we've got, so far we haven't used any bright reds, just trying to keep it simple using these 
a little bits of alizarin here and there to darken, to get the dark spots in. So now I gotta still do this area here. Kind of pop in that brighter, sort of a bit of a red. I'm just gonna add a little white to that area there. And I can add some cad red medium into that little bit of uh, lighter, lighter puddle of paint there. And I'm gonna add some of that lighter red up there. And I see some in here too. So I'm kind of now looking at these areas where there's some in between reds that are sort of more kind of an orangey red versus the other one was more of like a purpley alizarin-y type red. And then over here, there's a little hint of that kind of coming down into that edge there and back here too. So you kind of, it's like almost like a puzzle. So you're building this sort of puzzle with it. And I see another spot of that red in here. And then some more here. Get a little bit more red and I'm going to add a little orange to this front petal has a little bit more of a warmer. There's a little high little spot in there here and there of some of this warmer kind of more orangey. Red so I'll just add a few hints of that in there. And then back to my more purpley red for this petal here. Like that. So now I can, now that I've kind of blocked in some of the, the basic shapes, I can sort of get a little more finicky about uh, where, where these edges will go a bit. I've got this one kind of comes out a little further, get some of that alizarin on there and I can kind of darken some of those edges again that kind of got rubbed away with my paper towel. Show off some of those curves in the way the, the petals kind of crunkle. And there's sort of a crossover. Um, just add a little bit of white to that. And there's this sort of transparent effect here where this petal kind of comes down here. So there's a bit of a, a little bit of a darker edge and then it wraps down sort of like that. So we can add that in. And again, don't you don't have to make it perfect. Um, I'm trying to be this, some roses I do, I, I go a little bit on the messier side. This rose I'm doing a little bit more precise because I'm doing sort of one single rose but you know you can you can watch my other rose videos and see I have different different ones this is more of a precise rose because of that red edge I really wanted to show that so now I'm going to use some of the alizarin and continue to sort of look at my reference photo and add back that little bits of dark 
to the edge that you can see and kind of add a bit of that in and you can always add it in and then loosen it off again so it doesn't have to go back to super I don't want it to go back to looking, you know, super tight again, but I want to make sure I put those some of those darker notes in because that's what really makes the you know, the rose sort of stand out. So I'm just kind of going around with that alizarin and um adding some of those little tips back in. And all right, so now we've got some of those darker notes there. Um, we got now some fun, you know, brighter notes to put in. So get some of that red, um, cad red medium and a little orange to, you know, get a bigger, you know, a little bit of a brighter highlight there. And this, this one, I'm going to add a little white to. This one's a little bit duller. And sort of add a few of those lighter tips to that. You can add some more white and just kind of lighten some of them up a bit more. make those little thicker edges kind of pop and some kind of some lighter areas in there and then up here I see a little bit of a lighter note of that red there and then I can kind of look at everything again and um, adjust my value so I want to go in with that alizarin and maybe even add a little bit of that tiny touch of this ultramarine blue just to really get some darker dark super dark notes there and put in a few real dark red marks and details in the back here where you see they get kind of, there's some real dark edges, but not too, too many. You don't want to go over the top with it. And there's a few in here. So you can see there's, there's some darks and lights and we got warm white and we got those shadow cool whites. I'm going to go now and get a little white and a little of that, you know, yellow ochre again and put a kind of a bit of a highlight on this side here just to add another level up of, of some light hitting that rose. So just put a little in there and then real gently, I'm just dragging it into the, the mix a bit. And then you could take a little bit of pink of that red mix and put it in there and then find a few 
highlights up here. And then get a little bit more of that red. Add some quinacrinone red, red into the CAD red medium and it kind of gets a really bright, super bright red in there. Just finding a few spots where there's some, another, another kind of uh, shade of red. Maybe on this shadow, put a little bit of that deep red in there. Just leaving that light on the edge and then get that alizarin in there and kind of put in a little bit of that shadow. And then you might go back to your fan brush again and just kind of soften, really soften some edges. Is it a nice um, nice feeling there? Just sort of soften some of those marks. And then if you want to sharpen any edges, just go back and you know I might want to sharpen that light area again. So I'll get some white and yellow ochre again and just kind of go back and put my highlight back on there and using the white and yellow ochre to sort of a warm warm highlight back on there Okay, and you could add a little bit of that yellow ochre and a tiny bit of sap in there and maybe even some of that purple blue mixture just to kind of get a little bit of a highlight on the bottom of the rose there. And then we have all these greens here and it's, you know, Mainly I did the demo for the rose, but I can show you sort of if you take some sap green and a little bit of this yellow ochre and that white, you can paint in, you know, the little petal underneath pretty easy. Just get some yellow ochre, sap, and any kind of white that you've got out there, this would be good, this purple. And you can use the edge um, of your brush to put on a little bit of a highlight, get a little more white in there. And put in a little bit of that detail. And then on the shadow side, just get some sap and red oxide, white, so it's it's transparent, sorry, yeah, red oxide, and you could just put another stem in the shadow just without any highlight on it. And uh, also using your background, you can Put in a note or two of darker paint, like get some sap and this alizarin mix, and you could just put in a note right where you have that light, you know, of darker paint there, just to really enhance that that highlight there. 
So what I've come to see is roses are one of my most challenging flowers. So they take a lot of practice and I like to practice sunflowers more, I suppose, than roses, but I think roses are, you know, so pretty that it's worth, um, worth trying to learn. So I hope you like this little demo and I will look forward to seeing you in the next uh, video. And happy painting.